Week one is done and the IU football team is looking to continue their win streak to start off 2-0. Could the Hoosiers buck the Broncos in week two? Success comes in sets of four for the Hoosier volleyball squad as the ladies swept the competition at the Hampton Inn Invitational over the weekend. A week after hosting their own tournament, the men's soccer team headed to South Bend to play in the Mike Bartercelli tourney and rise in the top 25 rankings. All this and more on this episode of Hoosier Sports Night. and welcome to this edition of Hoosier Sports Night. I'm Casey Richards alongside Kate Setting. And Kate, the Hoosiers improved to 2-0 on Saturday, but it certainly wasn't pretty. It sure wasn't, Casey. And with the tough conference schedule approaching, it seems things may only be going downhill from here. For the sixth year in a row, IU football looked to start off the season 2-0. Over the weekend, they battled the Western Michigan Broncos to try to capture their second win. The run game, led by Demetrius McCray and Mitchell Evans, spearheaded the Hoosier attack, but was it enough? Here we go as IU takes the field against Western Michigan, looking for its second win. In the first, Mitch Evans out of the Wildcat formation keeps it. He's going to pick up 16 yards and the first down. Nick Freeland would cap off the drive with a 21-yard field goal as IU takes the lead 3-0. In the second, Chapel now under center, throws a strike to Evans for 20 yards. Evans would finish the game with 66 all-purpose yards. Same drive now. Second and goal, Chapel keeps it for himself, picks up six points for the Hoosiers, and IU's up 10-0. But back come the Broncos. On the ensuing drive, first and goal, Drew Birdie fakes the handoff and takes it into the end zone. Birdie's lone carry of the game puts Western Michigan back in it, 10-7 Hoosiers. Later in the second, IU now driving, and Demetrius McCray is going to find a huge hole, and nobody's going to catch him. A 59-yard touchdown run gives IU a 17-10 lead. Going into halftime, McCray would finish with 134 rushing yards and that touchdown. After half, Broncos with the ball. Play action. Hillard looking deep, and it's complete to Arnheim for a 41-yard touchdown. 14-17 Hoosiers. Now IU up 23-17. Broncos punting. A bad snap, IU's Jeremy Finch going to recover it, but IU unable to do anything with the great field position. Late in the fourth, Broncos down six with less than five left. Hillard's going to air it out, and the pass falls incomplete, but Hillard is just annihilated on the play as IU brings the blitz. Under two left, first and goal for Western Michigan. But Greg Middleton causes the fumble, Justin Carrington recovers, and seals the victory for IU. IU would take a safety with 23 seconds remaining. A 23-19 final, and IU goes 2-0 to start off the season. For more on the game, here's Courtney Cronin. For the second straight week, the Indiana defense came up big in the most crucial part of the game, forcing a fumble late, leading them to a 23-19 win over Western Michigan on Saturday. The biggest thing with the defense is they just kept playing, they didn't quit, you know, I mean, now your back's against the wall, what was there, a minute 30? And, and uh, <clears throat> we only had one timeout. <clears throat> so they're going to be able to run it down, and you know, basically we might not have had any time left. The defense played great. Um, they really did. They came up with big stops when they needed to and uh, you know, really held down a, a really solid offense the whole game. Well, that's what you know, we're taught to do. Uh, no matter what the offense does, you know, as long as they can put some points on the board, you know, uh, we should be able to win. So you know, that's the kind of mentality we need to have you know, throughout the season. Perhaps the biggest change from week one to week two came with a look at the offense. Last week against Eastern Kentucky, the Hoosiers were forced to rely on the passing game, but this week IU took control of their offense, relying on the running game that rushed for 187 yards. We got the big play um, with D down the sideline off of, you know, a fake uh, with Pan and Doss coming across in a jet sweep. So, you know, adding a little bit helped us, um, but I think you know, go back, we probably blocked a little bit better, and, and I thought D had a good day. Offense did a great job. We, they could really control the line of scrimmage, and if they was doing that, that just makes my job even easier. IU's offense was clearly more on point than when they were held to only 73 rushing yards against Eastern Kentucky, but the 372 yards of total offense produced Saturday was affected by the 13 penalties IU sustained for 106 yards. Starts with me. 
we'll get this penalty straightened out. That penalties are on me, um, and uh, we'll work on that. There are some penalties of, uh, um, you know, just great effort by kids. That happens, but a lot of them will get straightened out. But that's, I'll hold my hand up on that one. We're definitely gonna look at the film and break it down, and correct all those mistakes that we had, all those penalties. Like we, we can't have that in the fourth quarter. Like, like starting with myself because I had that uh, late hit on the quarterback. That's something we have to get fixed, no question. We can't have pre-snap penalties. Uh, it just kills you, and uh, you know that's something that we gotta get fixed. In the last six years, Indiana's eight and two against MAC opponents. A conference with teams that have given Indiana quite a run for their money. The Hoosiers cannot afford to let the intensity down as they prepare for their next game against Akron. At Memorial Stadium, I'm Courtney Cronin, Hoosier Sports Night. Thanks, Courtney. Yet again, the defense came up big at the end of the game. Defensive end Greg Middleton had three tackles and a forced fumble, the kind of play that helped the Hoosiers secure their win. On the other side of the ball, McCray had a career-high 134 rushing yards including a 59-yard touchdown run, and on top of that, Evans, who played quarterback for a set of downs and wide receiver, rushed and received for a total of 66 yards. Now here's more from Memorial Stadium with A.J. Shue. After rushing for only 73 total yards against Eastern Kentucky, the running game returned to the Hoosiers this week, anchored by Demetrius McCray and Mitchell Evans. Now we got the big play um, with D down the sideline off of you know a fake uh, with Pan and Doss coming across in the jet sweep. So, you know, adding a little bit helped us. Um, but I think, you know, go back, we probably blocked a little bit better, and, and I thought D had a good day. But that's the, you know, you always want more, but that's the kind of balance we feel like we got to have in our, in our, you know, our attack. Yeah, they definitely, they, they, I mean, once again, they did a great job of just changing up the formations. And, you know, usually sometimes the defense, they get used to seeing the same thing. And when they don't see the same thing on, on, on the same play every series, that keeps them on the hill. They don't really know what to expect. So that worked to our advantage today. Evans, a former safety, turn quarterback, turn wide receiver, made a huge contribution in the Hoosier version of the Wildcat offense. He's a very good football player. I, you know, I think in one drive he went from, you know, running to catching to, Throwing, you know, he's he's a pretty versatile player, and that's why uh, he's so important to us. The coaches have enough uh, confidence in me to put me back there, so I try to try to go out there and not let him down. I mean, I just try to do, just go out there and just try to make plays as much as I can. Uh, he has a another dimension that they have to other coaches have to respect. He can run the ball, and he also can throw the ball. So, you know, that's just part of our offense. That's just you know we have different personnel, and, and when he comes on the field, defense they have to they have to respect that. If the running game continues to gain speed, we may see a few more wins in Bloomington this year. From Memorial Stadium, I'm A.J. Shube. Who's your sports night? From age 23 to 94, former players from all generations came out Saturday to celebrate 125 years of IU football and to celebrate how far the Hoosier football program has come. Just to be a part of that is a big honor. I mean, I've seen guys that are twice my age come back with tears in their eyes. It means so much to them, and there's a connection you know, throughout the generations to see the guys that came in and played football here at Indian University. There's just, just a sense of brotherhood, a sense of connection, and a sense of belonging together. Our kids sense that those guys cared about them. And that's what history and tradition does. Those guys played football here. They understand what our guys are going. They want them to do well. Uh, and I think that meant a lot to our guys. When we had to walk to see all the former players, you know, lead us out in the walk and just to see that, you know, they still had the fire in them. I think they had a 94-year-old guy, oldest, oldest living player for IU history, and he was, he said if he could have played, he would have went out there today. The new athletic director is making changes in the program to make it a winning one. Fred Glass is doing a tremendous job. I really admire him. He's a Hoosier, he's an IU grad, and he's doing it right. This thing is fantastic. We've got the right attitude now. I think we have the right coaches in place. We're getting the right players, and we're going to get there. It's absolutely phenomenal uh, facilities now. To have all these guys, these former players, come back, uh, and it was great leading the team in the walk. It felt like we, we were all ready to look, put on the gear and start playing. I think it was moving to our guys, to tell you the truth. And then at the walk this morning, Mr. Cherry leading the walk, 94 years old, I walked with him. I mean, his head was down, and he was heading to the stadium. And I think if we would have said, keep going, we're going to put a helmet on you, he was ready to go. And uh, our guys saw that. Seeing someone still loving IU that much is, is like, just crazy and like, just inspiring. Just can't wait to like, get out there and, and show them that, you still, that we're still doing it like they did it and just still represent the Crimson and Cream like always. Even with all the changes, the most important traditions remain the same. 
Tell her, beat Purdue. Beat, that's right. That's beat right. Purdue. Beat Purdue. At Memorial Stadium, I'm Rachel Benson. Hoosier Sports Night. The women's volleyball team traveled to Athens, Ohio to take part in the Hampton Inn Invitational. Looking to continue their good start? See how they did coming up next. And the Indiana men's soccer team traveled up to South Bend, Indiana this weekend to take part in the Mike Berticelli Invitational. Keep it right here for that and much more on Hoosier Sports Night.